Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is the 2015 season, week two, and I am your caster for the match, Crick Chronic War Catalyst here. In this match we will be seeing, uh, on the blue side, uh, Sierner 1. Uh, Sierner is a uh, healthcare company that uh, makes devices and hardware to help uh, optimize the process uh, for like healthcare organizations, o optimize their processes, I should say. Um, so whether or not you uh, know you've come into contact with them, you probably have. Uh, they will be playing for First Hand. First Hand is a charity that provides funding for children in need of medical treatments who, uh, without it, would not be able to afford those medical treatments. So uh, fantastic charity there. I mean. No, I wish that was just something that happened, but so given that it's not, I'm really glad that there's a charity out there doing that work. Very important work to be done. Um, and they will be playing against, on the red side, uh, Microsoft One, W-O-N, because they're that awesome, and I love puns. Um, <laughs> they, uh, obviously Microsoft, uh, big computer company, they're actually uh, the makers of the OS I'm running this uh, cast on right now, and they will be playing for Charity Water. Uh, Charity Water is a uh, charity that tries to build uh, additional clean water infrastructure in areas that are particularly starved for uh, local access to clean water. Um, so they try and uh, bring in uh, water filtration systems where possible. Uh, build new um, wells to access reservoirs underground, etc, etc. So, another great charity. Both uh, charities really necessary to the world, so I'm glad we have some teams representing both of those charities today. So, without further ado, let's hop right into the pick ban phase again. I do want to note um, that Maokai and uh, the item uh, ZZ Rot Portal uh, are disabled uh, right now in the current patch, so as of recording this, at least, the current patch. Um, so, uh, we do see an implied Maokai ban from both sides. <laughs> um, and aside from that, fairly standard bans. Um, Rek'Sai isn't, uh, as common a ban as when, uh, she first came out. Uh, she's gotten a little bit less common as a ban, but, uh, she certainly is just as strong. And, uh, if you get somebody who's actually, uh, able to use her, uh, CC capacity in, uh, you know, the, to its fullest potential, then you get some insane Rek'Sai games. So definitely, in my opinion, a pretty solid bound there. Um, uh, the Nidalee, uh, coming into favor uh, a lot recently. Uh, a lot of people going more uh, Glass Cannon AP Nidalee again. Good, always good to see those spears chunk out a third of your health. Um, Thresh, a very all-around solid band in Lucian. Um, perhaps more of a targeted ban or something that... Uh, uh, the ADC for red side didn't feel as comfortable with Lucian not Lucian not particularly uh, overpowered uh, right now um, seems very in line with the standard ADC bands um, or standard ADC power level um, whereas uh, we see uh, blue side did pick up that Graves Graves has become uh, one of the new uh, like breakout ADCs again with the recent uh, past changes these past two patches. Um, but so let's analyze uh, this team a little bit more just than the ADC. We also have uh, Shivana and J4. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of frontline tank capabilities, especially when Shivana ults, she gets that um, additional uh, resistances, more armor and magic resist. Um, so she's going to be definitely uh, flying into the face of this red team uh, and able to start ripping them to shreds as much as she can. Um, because Shivana actually does pack quite a punch. Uh, a lot of Shivanas even take uh, hybrid damage runes uh, because some of her damage does come as magic damage. And if you see a more damage Shivana or even just a Shivana that builds Blade of the Ruin King, she'll be able to, uh, if she dives in, uh, pretty much 1v1 in ADC. So she's definitely um, not something to be taken lightly even though she's in the t traditional tank role. Um, and J4, similarly, of course, everybody knows that J4 has a lot of mean damage. <laughs> so definitely you need to be watching out for them. But that's going to be the main front line as the game goes on and they start to transition into their more uh, traditional tank roles. Um, so a very solid front line there. A lot of good disengage for Shivana. Uh, between uh, the disengage for Janna, like, that's pretty much it. Like, you don't, you have a Janna. You're good with disengage. <laughs> um, but uh, between... Uh, the Shivana and uh, J4 engage, 
Um, that's probably going to be it, uh, that they would need to set up any sort of team fight if they can get a uh, good use for either the Flag and Drag or the J4 or Shivana Ultimate. That's pretty much all you need to start off a team fight favorably. Um, it's not as potent as, say, like, pick uh, potential to set up a team fight, uh, but it is still very strong, and of course J4 does have that pick potential if uh, he does find somebody who's isolated. Syndra uh, just recently did have the hitboxes for her balls when she knocks them back to try and stun people. The hitboxes on that uh, have been slightly lowered. So uh, we're going to see an interesting test here of uh, how strong of a uh, uh, skill shot um, the uh, blue side's uh, Syndra mid laner is. Um, because that definitely has actually increased substantially in that difficulty. Even just shaving off a little bit of that hitbox uh, makes that shot a lot harder to land because of just how you have to position yourself relative to uh, the balls that you have on the ground there. So looking more at the red side here, uh, as far as engage goes, uh, certainly we're going to talk about that Mundo quite a bit, but I want to start with just talking about the engage. We have Vi. Um, of course, Vi can just chase you down with her ultimate or her uh, Q to, for that gap close. Um, but more importantly, she can chain that really well with Yasuo. Yasuo <clears throat> uh, is going to be able to uh, get his ultimate proc by either uh, the Vi ultimate or even just the Vi Q. Um, though, of course, the knock-up time for the Q is slightly smaller. Um, even on the ultimate... Uh, you get about that much of a window as well for anybody you knock up along the way to your target. So Vi, um, going to be looking to set up that Yasuo as much as possible. We do have an early pause out here, uh, so I'm not sure exactly what the cause of that is, but I am glad that uh, it happened early in the game so we can get through this pretty quickly without too much interruption uh, once the action actually gets started here. Uh, looks like it is a problem overall with the red side uh, somewhat, but... Uh, let's continue to analyze the teams here as we do look like we're not going to have that much action coming in. It does look like it's going to be a uh, pretty uh, normal line of scrimmage from both sides here. Uh, so it shouldn't be too bad as we see the chat here. Okay, it looks like we're going to go back in game now. Um, so uh, that's definitely the strongest engagement um, potential that uh, Red Side has aside from the infamous sort of flash crescendo coming out of Sona. Um, trying to position and then just get that really long dance party <laughs> stun that goes down. Um, but aside from the Sona, of course, uh, the suspended CC that uh, Yasuo can put people into with his ultimate is definitely going to give a lot of strong um, uh, time for... give a lot of time for strong follow-up engage um, from the Mundo, from the Corky. Uh, and of course, if you leave Corky with some time to actually throw down his spells and weave in uh, the procs of the Sheen that he has on the Trinity Force, good uh, ward clear from that Shivana. Very nice, good seer. Uh, take that point in her Q to actually clear that ward and get that 10 gold. 10 gold, GG. Um, <laughs> yeah, so definitely going to be looking out uh, for if that Yasuo CC does land with his ultimate, uh, Corky to Valkyrie into position to actually start weaving in as many auto attacks with those Sheen procs as possible. Um, Mundo, of course, uh, goes where he pleases, first of all. But uh, he's a little bit different uh, from the traditional top laner uh, as far as engage potential goes. Uh, we do see him poking around here trying to land some cleavers onto that Shivana, uh zoner away, uh, make her worried about... Um, a possible invade to steal this Gromp here to actually uh, prevent him from giving a good leash to J4. So actually, really well played there. Um, but we are seeing uh, the bottom lane here uh, start these Krugs. They didn't uh, go into the bush to try and uh, hard leash and uh, dodge some of that damage. Uh, but they did get both of those Krugs uh, while their jungler started top. So they're going to uh, be taking some nice level uh, experience here overall once they catch these waves back up. Because um, it looks like, yeah, they did only miss two minions, so I believe that would give them a level advantage here. Um, and get that early level two, uh, all things being equal aside from that in this lane. Yasuo going pretty aggressive on this Syndra early. Uh, Syndra's uh, Q damage was also uh, reduced in the early ranks. Um, going quite aggressive here onto this Corky right now. Corky actually taking quite a bit of damage. Going to have to pop that heal. That's going to be good enough for this blue side to back away. Uh, really strong first engagement there. J4 uh, taking pretty low. Going to go back here. 
after clearing that jungle with that uh, lower start. But we see again the exhaust actually being thrown down onto the Corky from Janna. Both of them quite low, but Corky not going to be able to follow up. Only at level 2, doesn't really have uh, the repertoire of spells uh, and damage he needs to finish that off. But luckily he is in fact with the Sona, so that sustain is going to be absolutely unreal. Um, especially with that poke. I mean, when you get in uh, close like that and can actually get Sona's Q to hit both people, Janna can only shield one of them. So even though Shanna's doing, or Janna is doing really good shielding somebody to try and prevent all that poke damage from Sona, uh, you know, she's actually going quite low herself, and uh, with no actual uh, sustain mechanics here in the bottom lane for the blue side, we're probably going to see them go B fairly early here, and yeah, it will be the Janna going B, uh, along with the Graves, looks like he's just backing up a little bit further into his turret. So yeah, so putting some good harass down here uh, in the mid lane, yeah, Mundo doing pretty good farming as well. Um, Mundo definitely needs to uh, have his early game punished here. Uh, get a lot of damage in there while you can. It's a, sort of the twin AoE uh, magic damage uh, spells being on right there. It was pretty cute. Um, but yeah, once Mundo hits 6, he's going to be nigh unkillable. So uh, if Shivana wants to try and punish his weaker early game, she's got to start getting some damage in. Uh, so when he hits uh, the later ranks of level 5, she can call it a Gankin uh, to try and punish him right before he hits 6. Looks like yeah, so we're going to be getting some uh, good damage again into the mid there. Uh, doing just the AoE knockup with his Q there. Looks like Vi is trying to come in for a gank here. Um, yeah, so trying to bait out some counter engage from the Syndra. And here comes Vi. She will land the Q, and that will be the dash from Yasuo through the minions to actually get within Q range and then take the first blood onto the Yasuo. Good play there. Uh, for sure, and it looks like we're going to see a roam down into this bottom lane to try and instantly uh, transform that into some uh, more advantage down here. Though there are three people, J4 did just come for the gank. They do know that this is unwarded since J4 did just walk by and actually Vi's going to be going for the J4 there. Uh, Might have given away this positioning but they're going to... they did force the Corky away so that will be a flash coming out of Janna to try and get away and with the shield no, that will be enough damage coming out of the Vi, and there's a teleport a little bit later, uh, so this Shivana might not actually be able to make a difference at this point, unfortunately for her. And it looks like J4 really wanting that kill on Diaso, but not going to be able to get it. And that will be uh, 2 for 0 in that sort of extended battle, uh, counting the kill onto the Yasuo, or uh, for the Yasuo in this mid lane here. So good start uh, for this red side. They do get the kills onto that Vi, onto that uh, Yasuo. So um, definitely good people to have those kills on. They can uh, make use of that uh, damage for sure, especially onto that Yasuo. Uh, but the, those two comboing together will get even more lethal now. So definitely something you don't want to see if you're the blue side team. Um, yeah, so we're going to come right in and try and get this uh, damage into uh, the no mana sh uh, Shivana Syndra right now. Um, knows he can just dive right in, punish her, and his passive shield will be plenty to shield from any uh, little counter harass that comes in there. Okay, I'm trying to lay down some harass herself here onto that Sona, but of course Sona, uh, with that infamous sustain, is probably just going to hit that W a couple times and be back to full health here along with her ADC. Um, I do also want to take uh, a chance to acknowledge uh, much ADC, such support. Uh, very good. Or I guess such support, much ADC. <laughs> very very uh, uh, strong pun there. I'm, I'm enjoying that quite a bit. Uh, looks like Yasuo is actually looking to try and catch out Syndra. He does not have this ward. He's hoping Syndra will come check. He does see her hanging out around here, and he's going to know that there is a pink ward down here. So he's actually just going to go back to farming this mid lane right now. But we do have Vi... Coming in for a gank, she's going to uh, clear out that ward uh, with a pink ward to try and uh, get some control of this bottom lane. Actually, uh, I'm going to grab this uh, Scuddler right now. So we might see um, uh, focus on trying to get a gank back down here into this bottom lane uh, to get that dragon set up. But it looks like Yasuo's actually taking quite a bit of damage. That uh, stun did miss, so it looks like he'll be able to just regen back up here with that health pot ticking. Um, and be alright, but 
We have Vi lying in wait here. She's spending quite a bit of time down in this uh, bottom jungle. And J4 actually is going to be here too for the counter gank. Um, he's going to walk right up to Vi. And then he will... No, he actually does... No, he does flag and drag away. We just saw him run really quickly for some reason. <laughs> well, alright. Um, but so that's uh, going to be this pink ward cleared out by the Janna right now. Uh, knowing that Vi has gone back to pick up this blue buff onto herself uh, this game. So you see Yasuo yeah, continuing to try and keep this pressure up there. Unfortunately, just outside of the range of this turret here. He actually will go in on this ultimate uh, onto the Cinder, and that will be enough with the Ignite. I'm pretty sure that will be plenty. No, she's actually going to make it through. She made it through with 20 hit points. I was actually mistaken, and Yasuo was correct to go a little bit further to try and get the kill there. Uh, but he did actually miss that. We're going to stay focused on this mid lane because both are living dangerously. We will uh, do a quick uh, replay to see what happened in that bottom lane. But I just want to see what it makes of this mid lane. No, okay, finally, yeah, so it is backed away. So let's go back and look at that uh, engagement in the bottom lane here really quick. So we did see, uh, it looked like Sona was stepping forward to get some harassing uh, before that Janna twister. And then we just have Vi coming in. Uh, that speed buff from Sona actually not being placed on anybody, but it's not needed. It will be enough. Sona actually picking up the kill there uh, onto that Janna. And this bottom lane is not very pushed, but with that kill, they might just go straight for Dragon Regardless. They do not see this blue ward uh, in the pit here a little bit deeper than normal. So blue side will have vision of this going down. J4 might try to come in for the steal here. He does have his smite up. But will he be able to get it? He has to throw it on the flag right now. And that will be... Yes, he does steal it! And with the flash away, uh, he will actually just bring Vi over. She was able to get her ultimate down just in the nick of time before he flashed over that wall. Unfortunate for J4 there, but definitely worth it to get that first dragon onto everyone in his team there. Uh, does give his life and the summoner spell flash for it, but that definitely does seem worth it to... Uh, make sure they steal away that early objective control from the red side. And with that passive ability power and damage, uh, uh, attack damage I should say, coming out now, uh, that might be enough to tip uh, these lanes a little bit back in favor of this blue side, or at least even them out, to make up for that 0-4 uh, discrepancy right now we see in the kills. You see Yasuo didn't quite have enough to finish that build uh, onto uh, the static shiv here. Um, either that or is actually making an active decision to not finish it to try and get some more of that gold generation from the Avarice Blade. Um, but Shivana getting totally baited in by this Mundo. Um, she is going to have her ultimate up, but Vi's going to be there. She ults over the wall to miss the Vi's Vault Breaker. That was amazing play by Shivana there. Fantastic ult over the wall. Just That's exactly the maximum range of her ult as well. Fantastic play. Knowing the limitations of your champion that well. Uh, to know just exactly how far you can ult um, and have the feeling that Vi was coming over. So as soon as she saw that Vi, she was able to just ult right away with no hesitation. But it does look like a Syndra. Oh, great dodge on the Vault Breaker there from Syndra. But that will be J4 coming in with the cata Cataclysm. And a lot of damage is put onto that Vi. It looks like Shivana will most likely be able to get this cleaned up, but she actually won't. Yasuo trying to slow her down with the wind wall there and the knockup gonna be enough to save that Vi. Vi easily under 20 hit points there. Just barely making it out by the skin of her teeth. Uh, so she will be picking up the kill onto that Syndra for free there. Very dangerous game, but at this point, uh, if they can keep that up, they're going to play that dangerous game very well and just continue to push. Excuse me, continue to push the issue here. And extend that lead as much as they can. Uh, especially with uh, the bottom lane. Uh, if they're able to continue to hold out um, until Corky can actually go back and pick up that Trinity Force here. Uh, Corky will just innately be a little bit ahead of time here. Great uh, wind wall there on the ball from Syndra to prevent some damage. As Yasuo does have that useless blue buff. <laughs> With all the, uh, with the main point of Yasuo being attack speed to lower his cooldowns, even uh, despite not having mana, he's not even getting any cooldown reduction. But Vi actually going to queue in. Oh, the tornado actually going to land on a Vi, but Mundo teleporting in will be plenty. 
uh, to secure that kill onto the graves. So, or er, Janna gonna flash away, but with the Mundo tanking the turret, that might actually be enough. And yes, with that ultimate pop from Mundo, that will be plenty of tanking uh, to be able to hang out and finish off that Janna, regardless of her shield. And that will be a two for nothing. Uh, I suppose a two for the teleport down from Mundo, but aside from that, no return kill to this red side. And as uh, we enter the mid game here, it's starting to look like uh, red side's gonna run away with this game. Zero and seven. Yasuo looking to uh, try and extend that even further, pick up a kill here onto this Syndra, who does land a really good knockback, but is unfortunately just not able to get away in time. Simply too many people there, too much DPS uh, to be avoided, and Syndra not able to make it out of their lives. So that will be bringing up the overall total to 0 and 8. Um, the one saving grace, I suppose, is that dragon uh, that J4 was able to steal earlier as this mid turret goes down to give uh, two turrets down for the red team here uh, to nothing right now on the blue side. Though Shivana going to change that momentarily, getting this turret down in the top lane here. As we see some trading back and forth uh, with that. Actually going to try and flash forward and he does get it. I was just about to say Graves going to back away as he sees that aura from Sona coming up. But he was actually uh, just baiting that out a little bit. Willing to blow that flash once he saw uh, how low the Corky got there and land that. So the first kill for the blue side and onto the Graves. Definitely uh, the best target to put that on for sure. And that's even going to result in a turret down here. So the turrets will be evened up now. 2-2. Two to two. Vi going to try and make something happen down here. But actually just going to clear out this ward. As we see some more pressure in this mid lane from the Asso. Trying to uh, zone away what he can of this Syndra here. But with that, if uh, we can see... I mean, understanding... Uh, that this experience is what's going to be uh, really driving some of these team fights, uh, the advantage in those team fights over to the red side uh, because of all those kills that they have. Aside from that, overall the gold distribution isn't, or the gold uh, disparity, I should say, isn't that far. It's only about two and a half uh, thousand gold at this point. And if they can continue to control this dragon, uh, they definitely will be able to uh, come back in this. They can deny. Uh, even one dragon going over to this uh, red team, and that alone, regardless of if they pick up the dragons themselves, will do quite a bit of work. And Yasuo actually going to be caught out here in the Cataclysm, and with the pylon of everybody, that looks like that's going to be two kills for nothing going over to this blue side. That's exactly the engagement they want, a great catch out from the blue side here. Now they're looking to get this dragon uh, exactly the right play here. They definitely need to pick up as many dragons as possible to try and Continue that objective domination and Graves going to be zoning away here. Actually able to handle this with the Janna easily. Uh, and that will be the dragon right there. Um, a little damage onto that Corky, but unfortunately Cinder not able to follow that up uh, as her ultimate is on cooldown. It looks like everyone will be largely going back. Javon going to push this wave in to deny some XP. Uh, and then that will be everyone going back to cash in some of that delicious gold uh, that they did just pick up there. Um, as we do see the bottom lane coming down here. Uh, try and clean out this wave before they go back as well. Or actually, they might even stay here to create a little pressure. And we're going to see Shivana, uh doing a little counter jungling here. Vi going to be able to smite that away from her. Uh, so not quite successful there. And with the Mundo in tow, uh, Shivana is actually going to be in quite a predicament here. That looks like it will be the kill. Yes, Shivana, not close enough. Did not want to burn the flash until she felt she was exactly in range. Uh, and unfortunately, I mean, after that play earlier, I have total faith in Shivana's judgment of uh, positional space to think that she just wouldn't have been able to flash over that wall there. Uh, but that's very unfortunate for her, so that will be a kill going over. As we see this battle in the mid lane, despite this Andrew ult, will easily go over to the Yasuo here, uh, who at the start of that was 3-1. Uh, all the minion block keeping that zone in a dangerous spot, but the ultimate will be enough uh, to zone them away as they do see um, the rest of the red team coming down here. And it looks like Graves actually will be able to just dance through that bush. I'm actually not sure how they knew. They might have been spotted out by this pink ward, 
uh, because there was no other vision of this red team coming in, so it must have just been uh, calls uh, either from the rest of the team or being spotted out by these two pink wards here uh, that gave away there was a gank coming. So very good disengage from this blue team, uh, knowing when to step back, and all of a sudden we see this blue team who, let me remind you, is down right now, <laughs> playing like they have the advantage and pushing it um, as hard as they can, which is definitely need, how they need to be playing this. Uh, they do have that second dragon, which does give them the extra damage to turrets and minions, so they're going to want to try and abuse that as much as possible uh, by creating sieges while they can, and uh, also while they can be able to uh, use that uh, discrepancy in the clearing power uh, that is afforded to you by that second dragon, so the red side won't be able to clear the minions out uh, as quickly here. And as we see a little bit of uh, back and forth. Jarvan trying to catch somebody out. He definitely doesn't want the Mundo though. I saw him click over here for a second looking at it, but uh, he's going to think better of that. Mundo, definitely not the target you ever want to go for once he hits 6. So right now we do see uh, the Mundo does have that Sunfire Cape completed uh, and is moments away um, from getting that uh, extra regen here coming in as well um, from that next item. So uh, Mundo will hit that nice uh, rounded area where he will have his armor, he will have his MR, he will have that health, and uh, he will be able to survive pretty much everything as long as his ultimate is up. Uh, so look uh, as we go forward to start to see Mundo uh, not necessarily being an engage, uh, but a flanker <laughs> for uh, some form of engage uh, as he comes in to have uh, either Vi. Um, or possibly even uh, Sona with that Flash Crescendo, which is available right now, um, to uh, start the engage and then have Mundo just pop in from a flank and finish off that engagement <laughs> really strongly, uh, as Mundos are wont to do. So, good win wall here from the Yasuo, showing off a little bit of those harass mechanics. He's actually going to ult in. Uh, Might have thought he was going to get the Syndra there, but actually only gets the Janna. Um, some good damage on her, but Janna probably not going to be um, too much of a critical factor in this next team fight as far as her health goes. Um, probably just going to uh, run around for a little bit as she munches down those biscuits and uh, get on back to full health. And here comes Mundo throwing those cleavers around, trying to get some harass in those cleavers. Do do percent health damage. I'm pretty sure it's percent health. Um, so he's looking to just keep chucking those cleavers as much as possible, try and chunk out people. Uh, as much as he can uh, to set up for a little bit more favorable team fight there. But it looks like Janna actually going to be left alone in this mid lane to try and defend um, this mid lane by herself, but the red side actually going to back away. Um, did not realize that Janna was the only one here aside from J4 who did come momentarily, so they probably uh, could have forced a little bit tougher of an engage, at least uh, get these minions under this turret to deny uh, some last hitting there, but. Looks like they're playing it a little bit safe uh, with that uh, last dragon fight. They do not want to get a little bit uh, over co confident here. So they're going to start to play a little bit safer uh, to make sure they don't lose this game unnecessarily here and uh, just play this out in a pretty textbook game. Uh, ro trying to out-rotate the team here. Uh, the win wall not going to be enough to stop the Jarvan uh, ultimate, but actually going to still go down is the Jarvan. That uh, knockup just missing them, so Yasuo will not be able to ult, but that will be the Graves going down regardless. And with the last shot from the Corky, that will be the kill. So that's three for nothing in this bottom lane. <laughs> the red side really wants that turret, but they do not want to tank it, even with Mundo here. Uh, as his ultimate is down now, so they're just going to wait for this minion wave to take this turret. Shivana probably not going to be able to do much, uh, except try and soak some XP here uh, as we do see the red side disengage after collecting that turret. Uh, Dragon is live right now so Vi after creating a little bit of uh, actually not even really getting too much push in that lane gonna just go straight for the Syndra. Yasuo catching the tail end of that ultimate to chain that beautiful ultimate from Yasuo at the absolute last second there. Uh, able to get that Syndra and that will be the Dragon going over unless if we can see uh, miraculous Steel, J4 is in the vicinity, and he is around, and he actually will go down uh, for the attempt this time. No, they're all, all going to be able to flash out and be alright. I thought they were actually 
uh, going to die there. J4 was the one uh, who got that smite down. I believe at least he's the one who got that smite down. Uh, it looks like both of them actually might have got the smite one after the other. Uh, but unfortunately that will be uh, the dragon going over uh, to this red side. So now they do have their first dragon of the game which gives you that initial uh, boost to your power. Uh, perhaps one of the most critical dragons in the game obviously aside from the fifth dragon. Um, so that will uh, make sure that this red team is not completely shut out of these objectives. Uh, and with that they will be able uh, to make sure they're not uh, put in a position in this game where they uh, aren't able to come back here. Uh, so long as they do not get shut out from the objectives, this uh, simple uh, uh, kill advantage that they have right now should be something that they're able uh, to continue to push uh, and extend that lead further and further as the game goes on here. Uh, but it will largely be relying on uh, how they use that kill advantage, uh, namely if they can get uh, some good engagements set up here. So uh, if we can see any uh, really strong picks coming out of the blue side, especially from Yasuo going B, going to throw up that wind wall just to be safe there. Um, but with with the Janna um, and the J4, there is quite a lot of strong pick potential. And with that Graves, uh, who does have that Infinity Edge complete, and that Syndra, uh, who's definitely not shy of AP herself, uh, they should be able to uh, blow up anyone they do get a pick onto. So largely, uh, despite that kill advantage, again, uh, that is a 6k advantage, 6.5 thousand gold advantage to the red side right now. Uh, and a, a definitely notable chunk of experience as you, we rotate back and forth here, we see the level discrepancy between these two teams. Definitely something they're going to want to um, be careful of. I'm not sure how much they're willing to siege like this, that Yasuo was busy in the bottom lane, so they're going to be able to take this turret for free here. I'm not sure they want to continue to engage on this, though, as it will quickly become a uh, 5v5, not Syndra. Already Chunk Solo is going to die as soon as she comes out of the zone. Just the Graves trying to cut as hard as he can. Actually does pick up the kill there with the assist of J4, but that will be two more going down within J4's own ca Cataclysm. And Mundo, with that speed buff, going to be able to slow down the Graves, so that will be... Uh, four for one going over to this red side here and only Janna left to try and defend this turret definitely not going to be able to here uh, this team definitely easily going to be able to melt through uh, that turret and a pesky sort of wind wall right there to make sure not even the Janna Q uh, will make it out right now and Mundo just going to shove these minions into that turret range to make sure uh, trying to deny as much last hitting as possible or I suppose making ta uh, Sona or Janna tank up those minions. Uh, sorry guys, it's been a long day today. Final cast of the day. <laughs> uh, but we do see Corky picking up uh, that red buff out of Blue's jungle on the way out there. So good snag there. Make sure do a little counter jungling where possible. Make the most out of that. And as we look at the vision discrepancy right now. Uh, we do see some vision out on the map for the blue side, but absolutely nothing compared to this light bright that is the red side. Uh, very great vision control, lots of wards being bought uh, um, on the, the red side to not just get an uh, uneven distribution of those wards, uh, given wherever the support goes, actually uh, get wards evenly distributed through both sides of the map here. Uh, and we see some deep wards here where they just uh, scuttled on through out of this uh, after this engage in the mid lane uh, but even more so the top side here around the Baron area is completely warded uh, with some starting to expire here uh, which was all laid down beforehand so very good control um, and wherewithal make sure they're not skimping out on the warding here because vision is the number one way to let a team come back if you start losing that vision control or simply neglecting to establish it in the first place uh, you do create those pick opportunities and red or the blue side is definitely going to be a team that will make advantage of any pick opportunities they receive you know going to be doing a little counter jungling himself here as we see uh, the blue side starting to go around try and establish some vision out here that pink ward unfortunately will spot out that ward as soon as it's placed um, you see pings coming out. Janna is going to get to sweep out a fresh ward here, so that's a pretty good pickup. And with this scuttle crowd going over to the blue side, uh, that will be a very key pickup here coming into this dragon, which will be spawning in a minute. So that crab will be up, giving uh, that speed shrine over to the blue team. 
should have fight that dragon break out. Um, though I'm not sure exactly how much blue wants to pick a fight at dragon right now. J4 gonna be actually gonna ult this Sona and jumping over the wall with the flag and drag. Uh, that teleport was stopped in the top lane here and that will be the counter teleport coming in from Sylvana so this will be a 4v5 now 4v4 with Syndra going down and standing in all that Shivana damage. No, Yasuo actually gonna make it out regardless. Minions will not have enough damage as he will lifesteal back up. Sona just gonna be running for her life here and right now uh, that's a 3 for nothing, uh, looking to try and be a th 4 for nothing, <laughs> but unfortunately Vi not able to get it, but that will also be the dragon coming through, uh, depending on uh, if they decide to check for this Graves first. No, seeing that he is gone now and not wailing on the turret anymore, uh, they probably will just back away. Mundo just going to throw a ward uh, in this tri bush right here and have that be uh, the last of it, and then... All of a sudden, red side is now even Stevens in that dragon count. Two to two. Uh, so right now, uh, we're seeing almost 10k lead. Exactly 9,000 gold lead for this red team. So not what this blue side wanted to see happen here. Um, it looks like... I mean, they are not completely shut out at this point. There is um, a fair mix of uh, distribution of the kills onto the right people. Uh, they just need to start making sure they get more of those kills. And, you know, I mean, that's very easy to say. <laughs> Not so easy to do. Uh, Mundo going to walk right by that. Very low Janna, unfortunately, for him. And that will be uh, this blue buff making it over to this uh, Syndra here. As Mundo clears out some vision in the top uh, Baron Pit area. Now, the Scuttle Crab is up. Red Side might look to pick that up and try and start... Uh, forcing a confrontation around this Baron area. If they can force uh, another team fight in the jungle, uh, if they can throw up some wards, it looks like they might be pinging out possible ward positions here. Uh, or possibly even a death brush here, as this is unwarded for the blue team. Shivana going to run up, try and get some vision established. Um, they do see the crab going down. And they will be able to clear out some wards right now. Um, unfortunately, J4 having that procced on this ward and then immediately walking the other way. Ooh, even on this ward, gonna miss it all. So, not gonna be able to clear out uh, anything with that. And actually gonna, uh, we'll check that out in a moment here, but we're distracted by two people trying to kill a Mundo. Probably not the best point uh, vision. And this is just gonna be a Mundo distraction. Actually, both of them gonna retreat, seeing those two kills uh, in this mid confrontation. So, let's take a look at that. It looks like it was Vi catching out the Syndra. Who then did have to Zonia's, but was absolutely just caught out. Nothing she could do there. Gonna be going down in the graves. I still miss the graves. Apologies for this, like, super uber replay here. But no, that was just a Yasuo. Okay, things Yasuo does. Hashtag. <laughs> Probably should have assumed that from the Yasuo solo credit there. Just a straight up Yasuo ultimate onto the graves he was able to catch out with his uh, Q knock up there. And with that Janna alone in the mid lane, with those two other players in top, currently that she will not be able to defend this on her own. They will force Mundo away from the top inner turret, I suppose, but that's definitely not what the contention is right now. The contention is this mineral inhibitor, and Vi will actually ult that J4, who does flash out of the queue, so that will not be another kill going over to the Vi here. And that will be the inhibitor going down to this red side. That is now officially over 10,000 gold in the lead. Um, as they're going to rotate, actually, with this giant minion wave down here, absolutely going to be able to pick up this turret as well. And there it is. Another turret going down. So that's uh, three turrets to six right now in favor of this red side. Janna feeling a little gutsy trying to taste, chase away the rest of that red team. Um, but a uh, quick Valkyrie over there. Uh, this is going to be all they need to reposition in there. Looking to pick up this crab here on their way uh, to establish a little bit of vision going back out uh, amongst that line of scrimmage uh, with a lot of their wards gone. Um, and we do see the blue side coming over here. Uh, they might assume that red side had gone back and they might try and rush this. Looks like uh, there's a little bit of miscommunication. They're definitely thinking about trying to rush this Baron, but they did see the red side coming in. Um, so they're not going to take the chance. And J4 going to just try and catch out that squishy Sona, but actually 
not going to be able to. And looks like that's not going to be enough damage to get anything. So that will be both J4 and the Syndra going down. And this Shivani even not going to be able to pick that up. Despite taking them quite low, that heal from the Corky will be enough to make sure nothing goes wrong there. And looks like Yasuo uh, creating that pressure in the mid lane will be enough for them to start off this Baron uh, and take this right before uh, they look to possibly rotate to that top lane grab. Uh, that is pushing pretty heavily in Blue's favor, so they might instead uh, just want to send somebody up there to claim that... Uh, top farm and then have everybody else back spend that delicious gold it looks like that's what they will be doing they will in fact be sending mundo up here to just clean up this top farm uh right before everyone goes back buys that gold and uh regroups to siege uh possibly this bottom side turret here uh looks to be the most vulnerable uh given the way the uh wave is pushing right now the blue side will probably have that answered Right now, we do have to note, though, the vision for Red Side is actually very lacking because they've been out for so long before that uh, most recent back. They did not have a lot of wards uh, available to them. And even so, uh, the only wards that were picked up as they're getting to the later stages of the game were on that Sona. Um, one single ward, um, or a couple wards actually, but uh, just Mundo picking up uh, additional wards than that. Now will be the Graves picking up that red. A good uh, pick up on that. Over to the Reds. Over to the Graves. Over to the Reds. Over to the Graves uh, to make sure he does have that red buff up. Uh, for any possible kiting uh, and burn potential he can put out in the upcoming team fight. Uh, but it looks like his dragon's going to be up. They might be able uh, to create a siege opportunity with the Mundo uh, split pushing here in the top. Uh, Mundo himself actually uh with that sunfire and with that uh the aoe spells uh gonna be able to clear out these minions pretty quickly and give the baron buff over to the minions he's bringing with them so that tower uh, is something they cannot neglect to answer here otherwise it definitely will go down to a mundo but with four people here hanging around this bottom lane we see the indecision here with the graves just trying to clear out that super minion uh in the top lane there but that will be um, the turret going down, a uh, little confused to as exactly where that turret was that just went down. Oh, it looks like it was going to be the outer turret, obviously, uh, for this uh, uh, red team here. And that will be the dragon as well. So that's now with this catch on the, yes, with the catch on the J4, that chain ultimate with the, the corky to just explode him right as he comes out of there. Uh, so that will be, uh, looks like these two splitting off. They are a little ungrouped right now. So if blue side eh, tried to all in, I suppose, there's no real spot where they can uh, even try to answer here, though. Cinder not going to have the wait there. She needs to save this turret. I'm going to actually lose this inhibitor as well, uh, even with that wind wall blocking the stun. So it looks like this could be the push to win, unless if they can get a lucky pick here. Uh, but it looks like they're going to play it extra safe here is the red team and just go up, collect this last top uh, inhibitor here. Uh, once they've got that push to win with the Yasuo, uh, with that knockup ready, not going to be able to catch anyone. So sort of a last ditch engage here coming from the blue side, seeing if they can make anything happen. Graves focusing on the Mundo, not the best target, but he is going to pick him up with that sustained damage. And the Graves finally exhausted, but he will be getting that Yasuo down. And this might actually be a chance to stay alive. That turret will be taking down the Vi, so that's only two people alive for the uh, red side. Definitely not one of the two you want with that Corky, but Sona, um, definitely not a bad pickup at all. And no, Vi, or excuse me, Vi, Shivana, not going to be able... Uh, to catch that Corky. She did not go with Blade of the Ruin King, so she does not have the active uh, slow to burn on him to try and make sure he cannot get away. But Corky, of course, with that Valkyrie, you're going to be perfectly safe and able to get out of there. But that does prolong the game at this critical juncture. Um, that very much could have been the end of the game we had just seen. So uh, Blue Side extending uh, their life expectancy at least a little bit right now. 
as they try and fend off uh, these super minions. Luckily for them, that inhibitor did respawn um, and was not taken down on the way out. So they are able, uh, they are going to be able to make it through these double super minions uh, fairly quickly uh, and get back to the normal waves with only one super minion. Air quotes, normal waves. Um, but right now, uh, there are no global objectives up aside from this blue buff here, um, which looks like Syndra will be picking up for herself. Uh, there's not going to be anything uh, that this uh, blue side's really going to miss out from. So all they can do right now is try and throw some wards in their jungle, which, oh, J4 actually landing the flag a little short. That's actually going to be the catch, and that might be the game in and of itself, that one pick. Certainly not uh, deciding how the game uh, got to this point, but going to definitely be a chance for uh, Red Side to close out as they do have uh, the uh, 4v5 now. With that Mundo able to tank up this turret if they so choose. Looks like they are going to continue to play safe and just bring these minions in and hold until they have a nice safe minion wave with them. That is two supers in that wave. Uh, Siobhan taking quite a bit of damage. Oh, and he does land it onto the Syndra, who is able to Zonia's, but actually Zonia's the majority of the heal potential there. Um, that will be Vi ulting in, and that will, that's absolutely no one going down for the red side, despite that giant turret laser just wailing away on them. And it looks like the Janna gonna be able to shield that. No, gonna go down to the Corky, who's just on the edge of the fountain. Corky gonna survive in the last moments. Right on the edge of that fountain, and that will be the game going over to the red side. A very dominant performance here coming out uh, of this Microsoft One team, showing just how lethal they can be. We do see, of course, the story of the game uh, being uh, not just the Corky who was 13-1 uh, thir <laughs> and 13, uh, but also the Yasuo, uh, who provided so much key CC during those fights to allow uh, his team to reposition that uh, was simply something that they were not able to overcome once that lead was started. Uh, also want to give good credit to the Vi as well for a pretty large kill participation for her team to set up a lot of those uh, team fights with the right targets ulted, uh, with the CC dropped, um, the... Uh, Chance was presented for the rest of her team to finish off whoever was uh, removed from the fight by that CC. And we do see Graves definitely put up a fight. Uh, almost the highest damage in the game. Uh, competitive for second place with this Yasuo. Uh, so definitely a strong fight uh, from this Graves being put out. Um, and a lot overall, uh, a lot of damage coming out of both sides here, but unfortunately the damage was just not where blue side needed it to be at the times when they needed it. So overall that will be the game going over to this red side here, uh, giving Microsoft one the victory for this game. So, uh, if you enjoyed this game, if you uh, want to see more, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All the games that I personally cast will be going up there, uh, as soon as they are cast. Um, if you want to see the entire AHGL schedule, go to their website, AHGL. Uh, just Google it. You people know how to use Google. <laughs> the schedules are fully listed there. Uh, all the videos will be posted to their website as well. And I will see you guys next week. Have a good rest of your weekend.